Let's just so whatever. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we are going to be making the Lola handbag. I have a video for this bag already, but it's very outdated. And it was based off a live video, so I was like, you know what, I wanna make these, I'm just gonna redo it. So here is the finished bag. So cute. Um, I did make some changes. I added a top accent peach, which kind of, peach, piece, which kind of mimics the Posh bag by Needle and Anchor Supply Co. Um, I decided I wanted the hardware to be kind of chunkier and um, a little more fun. Plus, I am going to provide a crossbody strap with this bag as well. So I figured if somebody really wanted to, they could just take these handles off. So it'll crossbody that way. There's the purse feet. I made this bag using leather and uh, woven fuse and Decoville light. We added a zipper pocket and the slip pocket it calls for. Um, and overall, I really love this bag. It's a pretty quick make, um, and I definitely plan on making more. I didn't add the front pocket. I love the way the front pocket looks, but I wanted to kind of make it really sleek and make the leather stand out a little bit more. So um, it's not really a good arm bag, more of a arm crook bag, if you will. Um, but yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Um, here's the bag from far away. You're gonna see. Yes, very posh. Um, yeah, I don't know what that was. Uh, enjoy the video. Here it is. But make sure you're subscribed. Because if you're watching and you're not subscribed, it's like, it's like not paying for fruit at the grocery store. Like, when you eat grapes while you're shopping, it's like, you're gonna buy the grapes, right? Just subscribe, you know, you want to, you wanna keep watching, but uh, yeah, anyway, here's the video now. All right, you guys, so just like last time, I'm gonna go over my interfacing and pieces really quick before I start the video. So we are making the Lola, which I explained in the intro, so I'm sorry for repeating it. But um, instead of using foam, I'm using wo uh, woven fuse and then SF or blah, blah, blah. and then Decoville light. So it's woven fuse first, then Decoville light. Um, I added a top piece of leather. This is like one ounce leather, maybe even thinner. And what I did was I just cut two and a half inches uh, off of the pattern piece from the top. I'm using waterproof canvas for my lining. So this kind of helps stabilize the bag even more. I'm only using one pocket. We're not going to make the exterior pocket. My two lining pieces, and then I've got my bottom. And this is interfaced with Decoville Heavy first, and then Decoville Light on top. Um, this isn't quite as thick as Peltex, but it does fuse a lot faster, and it stays way better, in my opinion. So there's that. And as you can see, this is just a bunch of scrap pieces. Um, I cut out three inches by one and a half inch pieces for my strap connectors because we're gonna do um, hidden connectors. And then I cut out 18 by three inch handles from leather. And we are bing bang, ready to go go. I'm sorry, I'll never say that again. So we're gonna start with our straps and we're going to add our accent panel. Again, this is not part of the pattern, but you know me, I always gotta make changes. So four and a half inch stitch length, I'm gonna start along the bottom. Tack that in place. Just going all the way around the outside edge to baste it in place. I am just using this leather with a raw edge. I didn't add any extra um, interfacing, nor did I edge coat this because it's such a thin vinyl, so soft. 
So there's that one done. And it's really not gonna add a whole lot of thickness to this bag since it is so thin. It's just a designer hide from Tandy Leather. Since I've got such a nice full bobbin, I'm gonna go ahead and make my straps right now too. This bag should come together pretty quickly. It's one of the things I love about this bag so much. And when I'm working with leather, I like to use the quarter inch basting tape. And I just add one piece to each outer edge. I feel like this kind of decreases the thickness from the leather tape, I don't know. Sometimes I feel it works best with leather. Ben, what are you doing up there? <laughs> so I'm gonna fold, I'm gonna peel the tape off. And I've got a very light mark at one and a half inches in the center, so I'm just gonna fold it about a quarter inch from either side, like it's like an eighth of an inch from that center mark, just so it's not too bulky right in the center. This is such soft leather. Oh, I love it. Oh, I don't know if I mentioned this, but I added Decoville light to my strap connectors because I'm going to be doing a hidden strap connector and I always like to add a little extra interfacing when I'm doing that. One, so that it is the exact width that I need it to be. And the other reason is just because this is such thin leather, I wanna add a little more stability to it. Um, so I'm gonna fold this on top of itself. And you can see here that they don't quite line up and I like the way that looks on a leather bag. I feel like it, um, adds almost like a rolled handle-esque feel to it. So I just sew right along the edge. I'm gonna go down the bottom. And then down the other edge. I'm using a stitch length of 4.5. And then I'm going to use a pair of scissors and trim off the uneven edge. Okay, so there's the right side of this handle. So pretty, so soft. This is like one of the most beautiful gold leathers I've ever seen. That's this thin anyway. It's just like this really pretty pale gold. I actually have not made a Lola in probably two years now. Um, I went through a Lola kick and I made I think four or three of them, I don't know and I really enjoyed making them. Um, I did add the front pocket. I do love the front pocket, and I'll probably do another video this week of one with a front pocket. Um, and I might just make that a separate like short video, um, just because I think when you're using foam with this bag, that, that front pocket can get out of hand very quickly. Um, and I think that the measurements are a little wrong for a front pocket. Um, hi, Ben. Do you wanna lay in your spot? Oh, you're gonna do it anyway. All right. And then I will readjust the camera in a minute so people can hang out with you too. 
I'll move my Kleenex, I'm sorry. Okay, so again, folding it over on itself with just a little bit of overlap from the underside. trim to the excess. Ooh, so soft. Okay. So now that those parts are finished, I'm going to get set up to do our hidden strap connectors. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut these apart. I know it might make sense to sew them together all at once, but I like to have them in sections just because I'm a weirdo. So I added a 3 4 inch piece of Decoville light, as I explained just a second ago. So it's not very well centered. That's my bad. It shifted when I was using my heat press. I should have used my trick where I heat the Decoville light up first and then I place it and then fuse it properly so it doesn't shift on me, but oh well, I forgot. Yeah, I could have added the tape first and then cut it. Okay, so now I'm gonna peel off the tape and I'm gonna fold the sides in. The sides are not gonna meet all the way, but that is okay. But having that Decoville light in there helps keep it the exact size I need it, which is one reason I love adding that, besides the added stability and strength, you know. That's not gonna stay. I probably could have peeled the deck of the light, but I didn't think this leather would have a problem staying. Okay, there we go. So I'm taping all of them and then I'm gonna sew down the sides um, and then I'm going to cut the slits on my bag very, very carefully to insert these. I might even make it available as a separate tutorial. So if you see it twice, that's why. So now I'm going to stitch down the sides of each of these using a 4.5 stitch length, nice and close to the edge so I can catch the underside. Hidden connectors are really nice because um, you don't have to be as clean with them. I, I really enjoy doing hidden connectors. reason I'm glad these didn't exactly meet up is that tape is helping them is gonna help them stay together later too so I'm just trimming all my excess and now I'm gonna go grab my 3 4 inch hardware and start on the hidden strap connectors all 
All right, so we are going to work on the hidden strap connectors. This is on a Lola handbag, but it's also a standalone tutorial because why not kill two birds with one stone or whatever analogy you like to make. All right now, oh, there it is, cool. <sighs> So I have cut open this handle placement piece for the Lola because I really do like where the handles lay on this bag. However, I don't really like that they're completely attached to the bag. I don't, I'm not into that, I'm not about that life. But that's okay because you can make any adjustments you want to. That's the best part. So I'm just very carefully marking out where I want them to go. And this is a Tandy Leather marking pencil. And now since I've marked the front of this pattern pretty heavily, I can just rub off. No, okay. There we go. So now they're opposite sides of each other. And I've got this little square ruler here and I can very very carefully mark out three quarters of an inch. Um, I'm gonna use a colored marking pencil for this. We'll see if it works. Test it out here. Okay perfect. That does work. Um, and then it's three quarters of an inch. There it is. Okay. I was like where is it? So I'm lining this up, marking out three quarters of an inch. Doing the same on this side. I'll probably use this marking pencil from Sew Line since I can actually see it um, for the other side. Three fourths of an inch, perfect. So now I'm taking this teeny tiny X-Acto knife. This is a shark apple cutter. Um, it's supposed to be a really awesome rotary cutter, but I'm not super into it. So to make sure this is a straight line, I'm gonna keep my ruler here. I'm gonna start and just go very slowly forward, very slowly. It should cut a hole through to the other side. If not, that's okay. You can go over it again very gently or use scissors. I am cutting through a lot of layers, so we'll just keep going. Great tutorial so far. <laughs> that was sarcasm, by the way. Okay, bye, Ben. Oops. So I'm gonna use a tiny pair of scissors, kind of cut through the other layers Oh, scalpel. Yeah, seam ripper. Here we go. So I'm just going in between the outer layer to slice through the back fabric. There we go. Beautiful. Repeating that step on this side. All right. So now I can take my strap connector and hardware. We're gonna straight through, oh, well, that's right. All right, so it goes through the back side up to the front. Very careful. So we've pulled the strap connector through the back side, like so, and just repeat it for the other side. You don't want to have way too much inside the bag, but just enough. I know, right? Like, what's enough? <laughs> I 
If your hole isn't quite the right size, you might have some trouble getting your fabric through, okay? So I would say it's about an inch on the back side, which is a pretty good amount. Now what we're gonna do is we are going to make a stitch line, not on the fabric down here, but on the fabric up here. Pretty close to the hole, but not on it. So I'm just gonna do a few back stitches. You don't wanna go outside the strap connector, otherwise you'll see those stitches and you don't want to. And then I'm gonna repeat that on the other one. Again, we're not sewing on the fabric in front, we're sewing on the strap connector at the top. Just to give it a little extra security. Okay. And now what we're gonna do is we're going to grab our, D, our hardware and strain it through. Slide it on through. And then pull it back through that slit. This might take a little work. Having like pliers on hand might help too. <laughs> Oh my gosh, wait, I have an idea. I have an idea. It's gonna be really cute, I hope. I'm gonna grab some D-rings instead. Okay, sorry, I have an idea. <laughs> gonna use D-rings instead. The only reason I'm using D-rings instead is because I think on the, the straps for this bag, I wanna add, um, snap hooks. I think it'll be really, really cute. You guys, I swear this is usually a lot easier. My nails are all different lengths, so this is, why are you being so tricky? There we go. You just wanna grab one end and pull it through. I'm not gonna lie, I've been known to use my teeth for this part. And you really do want this to be a tight, tight fit ish anyway. There we go. So I got it through. And then just pull pretty tight, adjust your hardware. And then just kind of resituate it. Oh my gosh, this is going to be so cute. And then you get to do it again. Oh, surprise. Pliers would also help, or if you have um, this tool here, clamp ends, you can grab one, one piece, pull it through. Just don't pull too hard or you might rip something, and that's never good. Okay. Again, you just wanna pull till it goes through all the way and then just kind of resituate everything so that it's sitting nicely. And now you can either add a rivet to this part. Okay, go to your spot. Um, or what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna stitch right along here. 
just because sometimes it's a little much to, to rivet through. And you really wanna make sure that you're only sewing on your fabric. You don't wanna to go too far past it. Beautiful. And that is hidden strap connectors in a nutshell. Um, I'll go ahead and do the other side with you guys as well, but you can see that they are really easy. These are great if you've got a nice big panel, you don't wanna cover up with strap connectors. And then they really are strong in the back as well. If you wanted to add a rivet, you could through all of those pieces, or what I've done before is I've lifted up the back piece and then just riveted through the front. And then the back is super secure and the front is super secure. Super secure. Um, but these are also nice because you have two sets of stitches that are like offsetting the weight of a bag. So many different positives to it. Can you hold on to that for me? Thank you. All right, so yeah, let's do it again. So I've got my handle placement piece. I probably should be, oh, Ben. Throw my bag on the ground, rude. Okay, um, here we go. Setting up that handle placement mark. Oh, I can't even see it. Can I? No, I can't. <laughs> if this is my first video you've ever watched, you might be thinking, wow, you are very disorganized. But uh, yes, I'm always like this. Welcome. <laughs> Pretty much just marking out where I want it to go. Okay. And now I'm done with my pattern piece. Since we're not doing that zipper placement, I'm gonna grab my little ruler here and mark out three fourths of an inch. Again, um, you could be doing this to the wrong side of your bag as well. I don't know why that just popped into my head, but if you didn't want to mark up the front, you could do this on the back. Probably that's something I should have done. Oh well. Just gonna slice through to the back side. So pull that through. And then again, don't stitch below. You wanna stitch above the slit on the strap connector. D-rings 
and slide it through to the back. If you're using glitter vinyl, this is definitely going to be a little more difficult because the fabric is gonna to wanna to stick to itself. Okay. And these are a little tricky to get the hang of the first time or the first four times, but hopefully you learn to get to like them. Um, this is not my original idea at all. This was shared in a group uh, called Creative Bag Making on Facebook. And I believe the first person to use them was Laurel Dasso or to like create a tutorial for it. I'm not sure. It's just kind of what I remember hearing. So if this was your original idea, thank you very much for sharing. And I'm sorry to not give you credit where credit is due. I'm the worst. Awesome. Here we go. Again, just gonna stitch along the top. Very, very carefully. And sometimes I like to leave my back stitches attached because it reinforces it. Maybe it doesn't in real life. Either way. Um, so yeah, that is hidden strap connectors in a nutshell. Hidden strap connectors demystified. Alright, so let's go ahead and work on the lining pieces now. I'm gonna start with the slip pocket. I'm using a piece of waterproof canvas, so I didn't need to add any interfacing. I just folded it in half. Now I'm gonna sew along either side. I'm not sewing across the top because it is folded in on itself, so what's the point? Did that now. Worry about that later. So now I'm going to carefully press this with some steam with my iron. And I'm going to stitch across the top. Now I have one piece of my lining and I'm going to fold the pocket in half and I'm gonna fold the lining in half. I'm gonna go ahead and add a little snip to the center top while I'm here. And then I'm just gonna lay those centers together. That way if my pocket isn't quite the right size or whatever, it's not a big deal. That's really uncomfortable. Okay, so now we're gonna stitch up and down one side and I like to go out at an angle at the top of the corner just to reinforce the pocket a little bit more and then I'll just connect these both on the bottom 
and back up to the top. And then I, I back stitched out at an angle just to reinforce that pocket even more. I've definitely had back stitches come undone on pockets before, so I like to make sure that that's gonna last as long as possible. So there is your slip pocket. Very cool. And now we'll add our zippered pocket to the inside of the bag. Just gonna go ahead and mark out my center crease. Grab one of my zipper pocket lining pieces and center crease that as well in the opposite direction. And then when I lay right sides together, like so, I can grab my zipper pocket template from bypierre.com. A lot of you guys asked me where I purchased this and it is in the links down below. I'm going to make a seven inch zipper pretty far down in there so that it's accessible. I'm gonna knock my stitch length down to 3.5 and just mark two parallel lines. that I sew zipper pockets really, really fast. And I just wanna let you know that the very, very first time I made a zipper pocket, I remember I was making the um, India Hobo Bag by Swoon. It probably took me an hour and a half to read the directions to figure out what the heck I was supposed to be doing. And then it probably took another hour and a half to execute said zipper pocket. So if you're having trouble and you wanna give up, you shouldn't because you'll get there. And then it'll take you five minutes to add a zipper pocket. All right, so now I'm going to press this guy open and add a little bit of steam with my iron. Okay, I'm gonna take a seven inch zipper just lay that inside straighten it out and if you'd like to switch your stitch length back you can um, sometimes I just keep it at 3.5 make sure your little triangles are pushed in all the way okay I just kind of straighten my zipper out and so I stitch. Ben, really? No, get off all of that. Now that I'm at this corner, I'm just gonna grab my zipper pull and kind of straighten everything out. Okay. Now we're gonna grab the back part of the zipper pocket. And lay that over top of everything. I'm gonna add some hair clips. I am gonna leave the bottom of this bag open, but, or the bottom of this pocket to open to birth, but that's not the way I'm going to birth it. So that's just another method I'll show you guys. off all the excess. I'm going to fold this down. 
and press it with my iron. Perfect. So there is our zipper pocket ready to go. I'm going to fold this. Oh no, my center fold's already there. I'm gonna add a little snip in the center as well. And then I'll do the same for these pieces. Oh wait, no, look there. I've got a center. So there's that little center snip. And I'm adding these center snips for when I add my zipper, which is uh, right now, actually. So uh, all of my pieces have center snips except the bottom pieces. And then we are ready to add our 12 inch zipper. Okay. So you wanna kind of figure out which side you want to be the front. I'm gonna go ahead and make this my front. Um, I'm actually gonna add a nameplate really quick before I forget. I don't wanna forget. Fold the bottom in half. The center snip. I'm gonna add it three inches up from the bottom. We'll see if that's the sweet spot. Or not. Just gonna add one of my little guy nameplates. Okay, zipper, like I was saying. Straight that out a little bit. Make sure your D-rings are down. And then I'm going to fold my zipper in half. I'm not going to make center, nah, who am I kidding? I'm gonna make center snips. Just itty bitty tiny ones, nothing major. Okay. And add your zipper face down, lining up your center snips. Clipping it all the way around. And I'm gonna fold the end of my zipper out at a 45 degree angle. Okay. And then I'm going to baste it into place. about an eighth of an inch from the outer edge. So nice and slow, making sure to adjust the zipper as you go, if needed. Okay. And now I can add my lining. I like to put the slip pocket on the opposite side. And then again, we're just gonna line up those center snips and I'm going to clip from the back side. So as I'm clipping, I'm putting them on in the opposite order so that when I flip this over, all of my clips are facing the right direction because I wanna sew with the side, I wanna sew it from the exterior. And then I'm just gonna come in about an eighth of an inch from my other stitches. And make sure that you Kind of keep your finger on the zipper so you can feel where the teeth are. You definitely don't want to catch any of your teeth. And then as I get to the pull, I'm going to leave my needle in and unzip very carefully. Okay, and then just make sure you straighten everything back out and finish your stitch line. And now this is a very small seam allowance, but I'm still going to very carefully take a dull-ish pair of scissors against the curve and just add little tiny snips. Just really carefully, I'm not putting too much pressure, just lightly 
lightly letting the zipper teeth fall. So you can see here, I've made all these little snips. So that's gonna help the curve lay a little bit nicer, we hope. So I'm gonna pull it through, push out that seam, re-zip my zipper, and I'm going to very carefully, with very little steam, if any, I'm gonna press it from the lining side so that I can top stitch this. Okay, make sure if you're using a metal zipper, you don't burn yourself. Okay, so we're gonna start top stitching where the zipper teeth start. Okay, so I'm gonna back stitch, forward stitch, back stitch, just go really carefully along the top edge using a stitch length of 4.5 now. <laughs> and now where my zipper teeth end, I'm just gonna add a few back stitches. So we're not top stitching across the entire thing, just from one side to the other one side of the zipper teeth to the other. You can see that it's sitting very nicely right now. She's looking mighty cute and I'm so excited over that bag. Okay, anyway, we're not done yet. Can't get too excited. Okay, so again, center snip, center snip. Line those bad boys up. I'm gonna use Wonder Clips for this part because we've a little heavier now. <laughs> Again, I'm gonna fold that zipper at an angle. Um, and if you are confident enough to that your zipper will stay in place, you don't need to base stitch it. You can go ahead and add your lining now. Um, this just kind of gives me the confidence to add the lining very safely. And I find my zipper ends up a little less wonky when I do it this way. Center snitches, center snitches. That's that's the word now. Clip it to the opposite side. Now I'm putting my needle into place, but I am unzipping the zipper because I do not want my zipper pull to mar the leather in any way, and I know that it will. So just unzipping it slightly and stitching a few stitches, and then hopefully I can kind of re-zip it back up and pretend it wasn't there. Feels good. Okay, and now again, I'm going to just really slowly add little snips. Does that really do anything? I don't know, but I feel like it does. And then I'm pushing it out and I'm gonna unzip it. Oh. 
and then I'm gonna press it from the lining side. And now I'm gonna change my bobbin because while I'm top stitching, I do not wanna run out of thread. It doesn't look like I would have, but I definitely didn't wanna risk it. So that is fine with me. New bobbin, please don't fail me. I have played bobbin roulette and lost too many times in my life. I ain't gonna let it happen again. All right, so now we're gonna top stitch from the other side. I am gonna start from the end. It's harder to start from this end, maybe, but I'd rather hold my breath and then breathe than hold my breath the entire time. So I'm gonna start where the zipper pull ends. Make sure my thread's under the foot. Needle in. Readjust my lining. Back stitch, back stitch. And then I'm just making sure that everything is folded on itself nicely, everything's pushed out. And then as we get to the end, I'm gonna back stitch, I'm gonna back stitch, I'm gonna back stitch. You guys, we are almost done. All right. So now you're gonna zip it back up about halfway and we can add our bottom panels. I'm gonna start with my lining bottom so that I, I don't know, I just feel like it. So you're gonna line up the bottom notches and sew across, making sure you don't sew through anything else. So there's that. And I am going to repeat it on crud. I actually wanted to leave this side open. I'm not leaving the side with the pocket open because I don't want to have to stitch through all that. So I just clipped my seam a little bit. It's actually not the end of the world but whatever. Either side would be fine to leave open. You're still not gonna see any raw seams on the inside when you look in your bag. It's still gonna be the zipper pocket, but I wanted to leave a decent sized opening. Okay, that should be fine. So I'm just gonna reinforce the stitch line. That was dumb, I'm sorry, I messed up. So now we're going to sew the other end of the bag. Through the pocket. And then we'll add this bottom of the bag as well. Um, it doesn't call for top stitching the bottom to the bag, but I kind of like to even though that makes me a little bit of a sadist. So I'm top stitching right up against my stabilizer. And I'm gonna fold this over and top stitch through that. I just feel like this helps make everything sit a little bit nicer. So I'm gonna do the same thing to this side. Oh, get back here. And 
then I'm going to top stitch the, oh, okay. So if you're gonna do this, add the bottom of the exterior first and then do the lining. Cause this is just making it harder than it needs to be. Needs to be, but anyway. So from where the zipper opens is where I'm starting. Some people have asked if you could use a zipper with zipper tabs and this is why I always say uh, no. Yeah, this isn't too bad. Reason number 100 why I have little bobbin thread left after a while. All right, so that's top stitch. I'm gonna add purse feet really quick. Um, bye, Piera. So like I was saying bye, but I mean B-Y. Bye, Piera also sells purse feet templates that are so cute. Um, I don't use this for a ton of bags because I like to add them a little bit closer than what her template has, but it works for round bottom bags and stuff like that very nicely. So I'm going to add them one and a half inches from the outer edges. Yes, you could mark this out before you add it to your bag. That would be much smarter than what I'm doing, but Clearly, I like making life harder than it needs to be, guys. Come at me. All right. Those look even. Now I'm using, I think these are either 16 or 18 millimeter purse feet that I purchased from some random seller on Etsy or something. I'm just gonna push them through the bottom. And then I'm going to twist them. If you guys are noticing all the scabs and cuts on my hand, it's from packing hardware orders. Um, I am so thankful that I've been getting so many orders lately, but it does take a toll on my hands. Um, I bought a pair of gloves, like workout gloves that protect from like boxing and stuff like that. Um, so I promise I am preventing it. Keep on ordering. <laughs> Just adding these washers. All right, so now we are ready to sew up the sides of the bag and then bring them in to sew the bottom. So I'm lining up my zipper panels. I'm gonna add the clip to those first. And then I'm lining up my side accent panels because I definitely want those to meet up and look nice and cute. Clipping all the way to the bottom. And then you can clip the lining. So side panel, make sure your zipper is out of the way. You don't wanna sew through that, that's not gonna be good. Line up your side panel. I'm going 
gonna be honest, sometimes my side panels don't line up perfectly, so I'll just kind of readjust them a little bit and kind of meet in the middle so that they're not perfect, but they're also not drastically uneven. You know, these are handmade bags, so they can't be perfect every single time. Unless you have OCD, in which case, just throw the whole thing away, make a new one. I don't have that kind of patience. Alright, so I'm going to start with a half inch seam allowance. I'm going to switch my stitch length to four. We're going to start with a half inch seam allowance, back stitch. I'm going to back stitch at the side accent panel. I'm going to go really carefully as I get closer to the side. You want to make sure you don't sew through your zipper just right next to it. And then I'm going to lengthen the seam allowance. Not by a whole lot, but just by a little. And I'm gonna start on this side and I'm gonna start with a lengthened seam allowance. I guess I should say widened seam allowance. So we're gonna meet up at the side very carefully. There is a height difference. We're gonna sew through that. And then we're going to pivot. Back stitch. Okay. And now you want to trim down your excess seam allowance. Guys, we are almost done. Now we're going to sew the sides together. I'm going to start with the lining. You just want to bring those curves together. If it helps you, you can fold it in half, set, uh, clip the center snips, and then line them up. But it should be pretty easy to just kind of eyeball, kind of even out along the sides. And remember, this is a curve. I'm opening up my side seam. The back stitch. Meet up with the other side. And remember, we do have this opening still. We're going to close it in a little bit. exterior. Just kind of close that, bring it together. Let's start there. And then I like to open up my side seam. I think they lay a little bit nicer when you do. And I'm clipping it so that I can see where my stabilizer isn't because we're going to sew right up against that line. And I'll just start with one side at a time. Kind of push it out of the way as best as you can and we're going to start where our last stitching was so there's two rows of stitching and we're going to start at the out the outermost stitch line just right up against the edge back stitch at that center seam and end our stitching at the outer edge
And remember, this is a curve. This, the bottom edge is curved, so you wanna be mindful of that while you're sewing it. You wanna make sure you're not just doing a straight line. I'm not going to trim the excess seam allowance along the bottom panel of either piece. I just feel like it gives it a little extra stabilization. And now we're going to birth the bag through the opening we left in the very, very bottom. And then we're gonna bring the bottom through our birthing hole in the zipper pocket and sew it up, push it back in, and sew this. So make sure your zipper pocket's open. We're just gonna very carefully grab the bottom of the bag. Again, very gently. Especially since I've used a metal zipper. And you don't wanna leave anything creased for too long, so. Try to go quickly, but carefully. And that's the nice thing about using Decoville is it's not gonna hold those creases as long as it's interfaced properly. Um, and then if you do get creases, you can steam them out. Ow. What was that? Probably a purse slip. the corners out on the bottom. Got a little spare thread there. Okay. Push out your corners. Unzip your zipper a little bit more. And push out that side panel corner. Punch yourself in the face. <laughs> all right, so after you've checked that all of your pieces are in place nicely, like all your purse feet, nothing fell out, we can close up the bottom. So we're gonna do that by putting our hand through the zipper pocket and grabbing the bottom of the lining that we left open. Pulling it back through. So here's one bottom corner, here's my other bottom corner. There we go. So now I'm going to clip this. So it closed. It only looks like a mangled mess because I had to seam rip etc. 
So now we can push our lining back through, making sure it sits in there nicely. Everything is nice and situated. And now we can sew the lining back closed. Now we can stick that in the bag, zip it up, now we're ready to add the handles. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Zip that up. Now again, I do have some wrinkles on the exterior of the bag, but that is very easy to take care of. You just heat up your ironing board with your iron and sew it closed. Make sure you push out the corner of your bag as best as you can. That's always one of my pet peeves. So precious. So to do my idea for the handles, I'm gonna grabbing four three-fourth snap hooks. I'm gonna grab my handles, and this is actually gonna add a little bit more length to the handles as well, so I'm excited about that. You're just gonna Turn it under. I think I'm gonna use rivets instead of sewing this. Well, actually I might sew it just because I don't have any rivets on any other piece. But make sure where you're folding under stays consistent. Okay. So I'm just using steam on my ironing board, heating it up. Make sure your ironing board isn't super dirty and then just kind of carefully lay it on top. And the steam should help. Oh yeah, goodbye wrinkles. And then most of our wrinkles have kind of disappeared. So cool. Yes, oh my gosh. Okay. So I'm just gonna make a little line of stitching across the handle. And I'm not going all the way across the handle, I'm just going from stitch line to stitch line. I feel like that's gonna make it look a little more purposeful. And I'm sewing from the front. carefully clip all of them or I could use my uh, thread zap but it needs new batteries oh, just like my screwdriver so that's why I haven't been using it mm -hmm. I'm also going to be using my pre-made half-inch crossbody straps for this bag 
um, to add a crossbody option because I know a lot of my customers prefer crossbody straps um, to handles. But let me go ahead and clip these on the bag because I am just way too excited. Yes, this adds like the perfect amount of extra bling that I was wanting to add. Ugh, look at that. So there is our Lola handbag all finished. I am obsessed. Then when you open it up, it's actually really easy to get into. You've got a slip pocket there, a zipper pocket there, and a nice deep bottom, which is one of my favorite parts about this bag. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to comment below. Let me know your thoughts on this pattern and what kind of changes you'll be making to it, if any. Um, and thank you guys so much for watching and hanging out. I'll see you guys in my next one. Bye.